are 70% pass in our league, you know, this is a start with the basic. This is almost day one of training camp right here, where we, we open them to basically to an area. They want to get to their depth, 10 to 12 yards, set. Then they want to see the quarterback, mirror the quarterback, break on the ball. And again, I think it's important when you do these is to do it in different parts of the field. I think it's really important not to always do it on the sideline. I do it a lot because of space, obviously, on field sometimes. But the more they can do it on the field and get them to the areas they need to be, and now they're settled down, then their, their coverage is controlled, their eyes back on quarterback, just so they're getting the proper quarterback drop. Now, this is a drill I've done well, for 20 years now. And it really is one of the better drills I've ever found as far as having receive or uh, linebackers so they actually get a great break on the ball. You know, here we work on, we call it steal in second. And we, the way we teach it is he's going to get depth. When the quarterback gets depth, he gets depth. So he's back to his 10-yard depth. These are two receivers right here. Then we tell him he's a pitcher. So you're just like you're on first base and you're trying to steal second. So as you see the quarterback get to his set, okay, you got to be uh, – because he can throw it either direction, you have to be able to break either direction. But once his shoulder starts to turn, now we can go steal second base. And when a quarterback jukes him or whatever and they don't get it, just tell him you got thrown out second. But this is a great look at how you steal second base right here. And, again, it's a good drill to get him in space where they have to move, and now they're reading the quarterback. Because if you don't see the ball thrown, it's awful tough uh, to intercept it. And, again, you can see him. Now, what we do with this, too, is we'll put a check down here. We make it a whole box. So you got a, a deep route, a deep route, and then you have two short routes. So now they got a, a break to the check down. And, again, it's all about reading the progression that they have on the quarterback. What I was talking about with, uh, with the progression as far as getting themselves back, set on the quarterback as he sets. You know, you've got to be – True till he starts to move, okay? And the quarterback, you know, he's giving a little more fakes than uh, a lot of them do. But, again, you have to make sure when you see that shoulder go and you're looking at the tip of that, you want to make sure you have a good break. Now, on the break, and a lot of times you'll see they'll take a lot of false steps. He takes a little bit of one here. But, again, by doing this, you're saying that these guys can cover 10 yards. If you got six guys underneath coverage, you're covering 60 yards of the field. They can only break five yards. Most of them can break a lot further than five. They're more like, you know, eight yards is what they're going to get on the break each way, which gives you 16 yards in each direction. Here's a good look at where he got his drop, he got his depth, came down, then make the tackle. Now, this is where I talk about we do it on the field, and I like doing it on the field, you know, especially, you know, you take the middle linebacker, a lot of times he has to drop to the number three receiver and the number three receiver and a lot of routes that's coming down the middle of the field. So when he's doing that, this allows him to see it, get back, get set, and now he can get himself uh, back in a position so he's used to playing that position of the field and then he can get his key back to the quarterback. And again, work on getting the depth. And there's a lot of urgency you can see. We're not just cruising out of there. And we start, he's on the hash, he's got to get to the middle. And now you can go ahead, set, and break on the ball. You know, we'll take it and move it from the other side. So now he's got to get himself back. You know, he dropped out to the number three receiver. The quarterback now brought it back inside. Now he can break. And, again, this allows you – you know, it's always interesting when I break down film and I watch quarterbacks throw and I watch guys break. You know, there may be a DB or a linebacker might be two yards away from the guy and can't make the play. It's because he never breaks. You know, and this really, I found, has helped them break because once they get their death, now they're, they're seeing it and they get a lot of reps of that. We will do this every week, some form of this. So it keeps them fine-tuned with this as far as, uh, you know, good breaks on the football. Now, this is just a jam. Like I said, you know, a lot of times backers, you wanted to jam for it five yards. So this is just a jam and break drill. So, again, we want to be in. They're going to be a couple yards away from it now. We want them to get down with it. Get both hands, drop their hips. Now they got to get their eyes back to the quarterback, and then we uh, throw them the ball. So this is a jam and break drill. So all we're going to do is we're going to go over, and again, I want them at least two yards away. Sometimes I have them even more. But if the receiver hits five, we hit them. Now we can go ahead and break the ball. And again, everything becomes a progression as far as what we're doing with it. 
you know, here's going the other direction. Where now he jams, he sees it, he's in a shuffle, he sees the quarterback turn. Now he can go ahead and steal second off. So there's always a progressive to all of it. Now, the next one to this is a jam drop and break. And again, a lot of these drills were created because we got hurt by this. You know, sometime during the season or somewhere I've, you know, been hurt. So now we put two, we put it on the field, and he's got to go over, he's got to jam. And now by putting it on lines, you can see what their depth is. You know, he's jamming at five. Now he gets himself back to 12 yards. So, you know, with a receiver, you still want him after he jams the receiver. It's not natural a lot of times to get your depth. So after they jam, he wants to get his depth and now see where the ball's going. And then we have him steal second off that. But again, it just, you know, what they have to do, you see him on the field. This is usually a will linebacker. A lot of times jamming the number two receiver. You know, he jams, and then the ball's got to come back. To, then he's got to find where is the ball going. Because once he's jammed, he's helped eliminate or he's helped the halfback or the corner by jamming the receiver. Now he's got to get himself back because, you know, you got to see where the progression is and where the route's going. And again, doing it in both directions. Because you'll find guys are better jamming one way than the other way. And they have a bad side, then you want to compensate for it and get them to work on it more. As far as, you know, the jam, get depth. Now they go ahead and steal second on the break. 